أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفينا ومولانا محمد النبارك وسلم my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته may the peace and blessings of Almighty Allah be with you and the members of your family on this happy and joyous occasion of the 50th anniversary celebrations of the San Juan Muslim Ladies Organization, I would like to take this opportunity to extend congratulations and best wishes to the President, Executive, and all members of, of the San Juan Muslim Ladies Organization on this historic achievement. Not many groups or, or organizations can boast of 50 years of existence, and it is so appropriate that the Ladies Organization would seize this opportunity to remember its history to remember its foundation and its philosophies, its mission, its value system, and all that it has stood for over the past 50 years. Let us journey back to a time when where you are sitting right now was once part of a plantation, the El Socorro Plantation. The Nur Islam Mosque was a concrete two-story structure built on two lots of land which originally belonged to the El Socorro Plantation. By a deed registered as number 2054 of 1904, Frederick Herrera of the town of Port of Spain, at the request of one Catherine Busby, agreed to convey two contiguous parcels of land, being portion of the El Socorro Plantation, known as lots three and four, to Gulam Ghost, Gulbra, and Bahari as joint tenants. By deed registered as number 1509 of 1905, Gulam Ghost, Gulbra and Bahari conveyed all their rights, title, share and interest in the said lots 3 and 4 to Mustafa of San Juan Village for the sum of $65. Lots 3 and 4 were described in a plan attached to a deed dated 3rd of February 1903 made between Frederick Herrera of the one part and Baba Munsami of the other part as abutting on the north on lot number 2 on the south and west on a road reserve and on the east on lot number six. Anecdotal evidence indicate that the very first masjid on El Socorro was in fact a wooden structure built on lot three in the early part of the 20th century. This spot is actually beneath the women's section of the existing mosque structure and was built by the father of the late Sheikh Muhammad Mustafa and Sheikh Hashim Muzaffar. In a brochure published by the Nur Islam Mosque Board to mark the formal opening of the existing Nur Islam Mosque in 1967, the late Sheikh Hashim Muzaffar penned these words. In 1912, my father, Sheikh Muzaffar Ali, built a wooden mosque, number one, on the very spot where the Nur Islam Mosque, number three, is now built. The Muslims of El Socorro and surrounding areas began to offer their prayers in the mosque. The Imam of this mosque was Mayor Nabab Ali. In 1924, the El Socorro Jamaat built a new mosque, number two, with steel and concrete. Its construction was supervised by S.M. Mustafa and Muhammad Ibrahim and was completed in a very quick time. Ghulam Hussein was appointed Imam of the mosque by the Jamaat. This mosque was the head office of the Sunatul Jamaat Association. The records show that this was a period when significant events were taking place in the evolution of the Muslim community in Trinidad. In 1920, Mulvi Fazal Karim Khan Durrani came to Trinidad from London to do missionary work on behalf of the Ahmadiyya movement of Lahore, India. His advocacy of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed as a prophet coming after Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam led to the first major split in the Muslim community in Trinidad. Heated debate took place in the Al Socorro Mosque and eventually Mulvi Durrani returned to London. By deed registered as number 3796 of 1929, Sheikh Muhammad Mustafa donated a lot of land upon which this mosque was built to Haji Ruknadin Mia, who was a Qazi who came to Trinidad from Punjab in 1893. Haji Ruknadin was instrumental in establishing a number of Jamaats in North Trinidad and small schools and villages. 
Haji Ruknadeen was appointed by Sheikh Mohammed Mustafa as a trustee of the El Sakura Mosque for the use and benefit of the Mohammedan Mosque thereon situate and the Mohammedan worshippers there. By deed stated 6th day of January 1936, registered as number 143 of the Protocol of Deeds for the year 1936, the said Haji Ruknadeen Mir purported to convey the said El Sakura Mosque property to the incorporated trustees of the Anjuman Sunatul Jamaat Association. The year 1949 was indeed significant for yet another reason. By deed registered as number 4128 of 1949, it is recited that a writ of summons was issued on the 20th of September 1947 out of the Supreme Court of the Colony of Record Number 364 of 1947 entitled between the Attorney General of the Co Colony of Trinidad and Tobago at the relation of Sadiq Mustafa Plaintiff and Haji Ruknadeen Mia and the Incorporated Trustees of the Anjuman Sunatul Jamaat Association of Trinidad Defendants, in which the plaintiff claim inter alia a declaration that deed of conveyance registered as number 143 of 1936 was null and void. This matter was settled in the said deed number 4128 of 1949 by the incorporated trustees of the Anjuman Sunatul Jamaat Association and the Kazi surrendering all their rights alleged to have been created by deeds number 143 of 1936 and 3796 of 1929 over the El Sakura Mosque property so as to reinstate the donor in the position he occupied prior to the execution of the said deed. The donor was Sheikh Mohammed Mustafa, who was the original owner of this mosque property. It was in this historic deed, number 4128 of 1949, that the much-talked-about trusteeship of the near Islam Masjid was established. In this deed, the donor Sheikh Mohammed Mustafa conveyed the land together with the mosque building thereon as described in the schedule to the deed to one of his brothers and five of his sons, namely Sheikh Hashem Muzaffar, Farak Mustafa, Imran Mustafa, Osman Mustafa, Ashraf Mustafa, and Zaid Mustafa as trustees to hold the same unto and to the use of the trustees in fee simple for the use and benefit of the Mohammedan worshippers of all sects, with power to the said trustees or the survivor of them to nominate and appoint trustees in their place and steed not exceeding six in number to be selected from the lineal male descendants of the above named Sheikh Mohammed Mustafa and Sheikh Hashim Muzaffar. From the very beginning, when we were children, I attended the old El Socorro Masjid, which was uh, constructed by the pioneers, uh, which was a flat masjid, and it, it was small. And on the other side, it was an empty lot of land, which was unused until the uh, people acquired that lot. And the, the masjid went on, and it was not the Nur Islam, it was known as the El Socorro Masjid. <laughs> First of all, it was always leaning towards a strict Hanfi school of thought, mm -hmm. where they celebrated Quran Kwani for the dead, they celebrated Maulud Sharif, they read the Tazim on Maulud Sharif occasion, and they did everything that we used to do since the old times, mm -hmm. since Saji Rukhuddin, Maulana Abdul Alim Siddiqui, Maulana um, Fazlur Rahman Ansari, and uh, Hafiz Nasruddin and all these people. So in order to get the place managed properly, it was suggested that we should have a mosque board mm -hmm. to, to run the affairs of the masjid. Mm -hmm. This is long before the new masjid was built. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> the original board was headed by Imam Ghulam Hussein, mm -hmm. and I was the secretary of the board. And later on, after his uh, uh, he, he decided to retire from his position. There was a new election and the mosque board was elected where I became chairman. And your father, Shah Mohammed, was also a member and played a significant role in the development of the masjid.